Hello, my name is Bobby Seagull. I'm a school math teacher actually in my class right now. Uh, I'm a author, TV presenter, but most importantly for today, I am your ambassador for National Numeracy, uh, the charity set up to make everyone nationally feel really confident and positive about numbers. I'm really excited because this year we're celebrating the fifth anniversary of National Numeracy, so our fifth birthday. And one of the new things we've got this year, something called the Big Number Natter. We're having the nation's first ever conversations about numbers to make people feel more confident about, guess what? Numbers. <laughs> so really delighted today to have Minister Burkha with us today. So Minister, can you please uh, say a few words about yourself for viewers? Hi, Bobby. Look, thank you very much for having me uh, on your show. Um, I'm uh, I'm the Minister for Skills and I work in the Department for Education where I'm in my office right now. Uh, <laughs> and um, one of the things that we want to do over the course of the next three years is um, help people um, in the UK improve their numeracy, particularly uh, adults who perhaps didn't do so well as uh, maths at school, um, you know, face up to their demons and get to grips with uh, with maths uh, and help them you know, build build a better career or be able to um, you know, work through maths problems with their children better or or just um, handle day to day uh, bills and things um, that little bit better. And um, so it's a really big drive that we're just kicking off called Multiply. Um, you'll be hearing a lot more about it in months to come and uh, hope to talk to you a bit more about it on this show. Uh, thank you, Mr. Burkhart. Again, really excited and thank you for your support for the whole program. So firstly, um, we're going to start, you know, our big number natter by talking about numbers. So I want you to describe, like, if you were to have one word to describe how you feel about maths, what would that be? Intrigued. Intrigued. Ooh. Well, what, why have you, that's a fascinating word. Why have you chosen intrigue, Minister? Well, I always wish that I'd been um, been a bit better at maths and that uh, I had some friends when I was at university who studied maths to a very, very high level. Mm -hmm. And and I always felt that they were really entering the realms of philosophy, um, but they were doing so in a way that I found quite unapproachable. Um, so, I yeah, I've always um, I've always felt that there was something really special uh, about uh, about particularly very advanced maths. I think you're quite right, because when I studied maths at university and I tell my friends and family they often assume I'm just doing lots of really difficult arithmetic uh, but obviously when it gets to advanced levels like what is the nature of number you're right it does get quite philosophical so intrigued is a great choice of word. Um, you are the son of a maths teacher which is brilliant so what's the sort of best piece of advice that you received as a child that you might like to pass on to any parents or carers watching this now? Uh, stay calm. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, my my mum would always say, you know, just stay calm, think about the question, work it through, you know, don't, you know, don't get put off by the fact that it seems baffling at first. Uh, and that's, you know, I think for anyone studying maths, everyone learning the ropes, that's the essential thing, that these, these problems are not uh, insolvable, and that this, um, that this is a skill that can be learned. And um, and a lot of people get it in their heads early on that they can't do it uh, and they give up and they focus on things that they're more interested in or that come more naturally to them. Uh, and that's that's a real shame uh, because it needn't be that way. Exactly. And I, I love the point you made about it being a skill. People aren't born being able to drive or bake or dance. These are things exactly. that we develop and maths is exactly the same. But even in my role as a teacher or as a friend to adult, adult people, I meet lots of um, people who say that they struggled at maths, um, especially at school level. And as you mentioned, because of that, they think they can't do the subject. So what would you say to those people that think actually, oh, Minister, maths is not my thing? Just, well, firstly, have another go. Um, but also, I think there's, a, my, my dad was also a teacher and he, he taught in a, a school in Southampton um, for a long time. And he said that um, a lot of the people, a lot of the, the children who were um, uh, most naturally gifted at maths in his school um, uh, were the sons or daughters of, uh, of people who ran pubs. And the reason for that was because they would go home in the evening and they would sit in the pub. And uh, this is back in the 1970s, 1980s. Yeah. And they would uh, and they'd score the darts uh, and they became uh, highly adept at doing uh you know doubles trebles and um you know subtracting things everything from 501 you had to express everything in terms of 501 but um but they they had brilliant um facility for mental arithmetic and it, it just goes to show that you you find something that you want to do 
um, you find a way into maths that you uh, that you know that means something to you, uh, and then you will you will practice without knowing you're practicing, uh, and that can be anything. That can be you know it can be scoring in uh, the football league or uh, or in cricket or um, you know or uh, or by by following the stock market. I mean it can be anything at all. Um, but uh, but the key thing is to is to just have something in your life that means that you use maths on a regular basis and you uh, you get used to it not because you're studying um, you know sort of uh, dry abstract um, number crunching problems mm. um, but because it, it means something to you absolutely again like as a math teacher I love I love the sort of the dry abstract bit sometimes because you know I think oh this is like I'm just getting my mind in something for the sake of it but yeah. the relevance I find with students when you tell them why something is important how it's relevant to their lives then is when they connect like oh the football league tables again for myself minister I got into maths not because of the maths itself but I was a big West I, I am still a big West Ham fan and yeah, I used to collect <laughs> yes that's a, my claret and blue and I used to collect football stickers and the sticker books had these you know the all the data about players names ages heights goals scored left foot right foot and I found actually comparing players and stats gave me the confidence yes, to yes, actually yeah. talk about football. So actually, whatever it is for people, whether it's, again, the stock market or cooking or trying to work out train yeah. times, there'll be some inlet uh, into maths. But Minister, what I sometimes find is, again, let's let's go back to that pub. Um, when we finish school on a Friday, teachers would often go to a pub and I'll get a drink. Usually I like a half pint. Half pint of bitters is my preferred drink. And I'll meet random people or not for my How school. How many half pints, Bobby? That's the question. Oh, this is a good question because it could have been, yeah, I'll say... One and a half. I get through like three quarters of a full pint. So I'd say one and a half, half pints. Um, that's a bit of fractions there in practice. But when I meet people, they'll often say, oh, what do you do? And I'll, I'll tell them I'm a maths teacher. And often they'll be like, oh, I hated maths at school. And the, the sad thing I find is that people rarely want to say actually they struggle with their reading and writing. But actually, they're really sort of almost proud to say, oh, I couldn't do maths at school. So what I wanted to ask is, why do we boast about being bad at maths? In this country and actually is there something that we can do to change that well i was going to ask you the same question bobby because mm. i i don't really know the answer to that i don't know why it's become socially acceptable um to to admit that yeah you struggle with maths um mm. when people wouldn't do that about reading and they they yeah they wouldn't do that about writing it's um mm. Uh, uh, and I don't I don't really know. And um, what I do and uh, what what is interesting, um, some some of the research that we've done for, for Multiply mm -hmm. is that actually there are also a lot of people out there who think that they're better at maths than they are. <laughs> and, you know, and when you survey them, you say, you know, do you yeah, how would you rate your own maths uh, level? People people say, actually, I'm I'm all right at when, when when they don't have certain sort of basic skills. Mm -hmm. So it's it, it's quite a it's quite a complex kind of cultural picture uh, and I suspect uh, that if you were to go to um, if you were to go to Singapore mm. it would be less socially acceptable to say that you're you're bad at maths um, yeah where they have uh, a much more ingrained culture of uh, of you know studied numeracy um, mm. but um but yeah I, I'd be, be grateful for your your thoughts on that and but I, I think that the uh, how we what we do about it is by again um, showing people you know, you know through at all stages in life, how um, how maths can make their lives easier. Uh, mm. And there's this sort of, I think there's this tendency these days to think, oh, you know, I've got a calculator on my phone. I don't really need to be able to do this stuff in my head. Uh, but actually, we know that if you um, if you know how to estimate well, if you mm. can uh, rationalize probability naturally in your mind, um, you can make better better judgments, and if you can make better judgments, you can yeah yeah you can do better at your job. So and uh, I think it's it's possible to uh, to help people see the world in this way. I agree with everything. It's almost like you're reading my script here, Minister. That's absolutely like spot on. And I think what I'd also add is that uh, as a teacher, again, when people say they can't do maths, they often say, "Sir." or oh, Mr. Teachers, I haven't got a maths brain. And I think that's one of the things we need to tackle because people often assume that you're born being able to do maths or not doing maths. And if we can say that actually, again, that maths being a skill, then actually people think, oh, it's because maybe I need to practice it regularly. Again, whether it's the dark checkout board or when you're in the supermarket estimating your bills, if you're checking your insurance thinking, oh, is a 10% increase reasonable? So it's when people realize actually it's a skill like any other thing. If you stop, again, I'm a driver, but I don't drive that often in London. 
And because I don't drive, sometimes I get nervous the first time back in a car. It's not because I can't drive, because yeah. I'm not practicing that skill. And I think maths is exactly the same as a skill rather than yeah. like an innate. I mean, do you think, Bob, because you're a teacher, I mean, I'm listening to you talk now, I just wonder whether part of the the whole I can't do maths thing comes from the fact that there are, you know, there's a small group of people, probably in each class, mm. to whom it comes very, very naturally. And everybody else in the class thinks uh, they're the maths people. You know, those, those, those boys and girls, they do the maths. Mm. I'm not like them, so I, I can't do it. And and maybe it's that, you know, it's the kind of the elite that, um, you yeah, that uh, make a make some of the rest of us uh, lose our confidence. That's, that's a great point. Again, like, imagine you think about driving or let's say dancing. Um, if you're thinking about driving, not everyone's going to be Lewis Hamilton or dancing. Not everyone's going to be a Strictly star, but most people like dancing at weddings. Most people will drive a car. Yet with maths, if you see a few elite people, they dismiss themselves. I think it's about, I think the mindset is changing, but it needs to change just a bit, bit quicker. And in fact, one of the places where mindsets can change is about at the workplace. So I want to ask you about whether you think numeracy can be like a stepping stone to getting started with learning and opening up other opportunities. Yes, I, I'm sure that's true. And I think that there, there are obviously a lot of careers which require you to have a maths qualification in order to enter them. So lots of jobs in the NHS, you, know, you have to have passed your GCSE maths if you want to um, if, if you want to go in. And uh, and I think there's there are definitely moments of intervention in people's lives where you can say look you you can do this and we will help you you know don't don't be put off if you want to if you want to be a nurse and you don't have your maths then we will help you get through that and um and yeah you could you could do that with a range of things but i and i think that once you've once you've shown people that they can overcome what might be kind of their their biggest um academic gremlin um, then, then I'm sure it will encourage them to to take on other things as well. I, I like that you call it an academic gremlin because one of our national numeracy ambassadors is Katia Jones, a strictly dancer, and she often talks about maths being a big scary, scary monster, but it doesn't need to be. I think it's like the more you pro again, if you ignore maths and hope it just suddenly fix itself, it is a big scary monster. But like as children, when you check under the bed, it's not really that scary. So the, the gremlin <laughs> monster analogy is quite, quite a nice one. Um, the last question I really want to ask you about was, are there any sort of tips that you have um, for adults who think they're not confident enough to make that start about improving their numeracy journey? The, and I, I think simply that um, when we started planning this project about six months ago, started planning Multiply, mm. um, yeah, we went out and spoke to a lot of people who were already doing work with adults and, and numeracy. And you just come across so many stories of people who thought they couldn't do it, put it to one side, you know, uh, forgot about it, didn't confront it for years and years and years, and who then very quickly with the right uh, teaching and the right self-motivation uh, found that they could. And uh, so yeah, if if anyone well, yeah, watching is thinking, yeah, yeah, that was them, it's not for me. It just, you know, there are people like you who have, um, you know, who have managed to get to grips with maths after years of thinking that they couldn't. And yeah, the, uh, the message that I want to really get across, um, you know, as we're building this campaign, mm -hmm. is that everyone can do maths. Yeah, everyone can do maths. It's, you know, it's not, um, yeah, it's not just a small group of, uh, you yeah, highly mathematical souls mm -hmm. like yourself, Bobby, who can do it. Um, it's, um, it's, it's everybody. And I know that you as a teacher, you know, share that understanding and share it with your pupils. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mr. Berger. I also want to make a T-shirt for National University that says everyone can do maths. Exactly. Everyone can do maths. Please do. <laughs> Get a big, big poster behind you for when you're doing your next, uh, you know, your next programme. Um, but please keep saying it. Yeah, That's everyone can do maths. Oh, thank you so much, Minister Burghardt. So this has been part of our big number natter for National Numeracy, and we are all excited for National Numeracy Day. And again, multiply such an exciting program too. It feels like, yeah, this country is going to, yeah, we are going to enter a culture where in a few years when I go to the pub with my half pint, or maybe <laughs> one and a half half pints, and I say I do maths, people might say, oh, actually maths is all right. So things like multiply and National Numeracy can make a big difference. So thank you so much, Minister. Great. Thanks a lot, Bobby. Take care. Take care.